San Antonio starts right now. Yeah, just set that coffee cup there, Sarah. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good. It is Friday, February 2nd. Hi, happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, very mild outside. We're going to talk to Mike in just a minute. Yeah, absolutely. Mike, I kicked the covers off last night. It was so warm. Uh, here's a live look at Gobbler's Knob in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, where Punxsutawney Phil is getting ready to tell us whether we'll have six more weeks of winter or if spring will come early this year. While we await the prognostication of Phil, Let's see what our Mike Osterhage has to say so far about our local forecast. Well, uh, first of all, yes, it is extremely mild when you uh, step outside this morning and it was warm overnight as expected. The humidity has definitely come back up. We're at 62 degrees. The normal high is 65. And I think just a couple of days ago, we were down around a normal low temperature in the low 40s. So a lot has changed and a lot's going to be going on not only today, but tonight, especially and all weekend long. We're going to make it up to 70 later on today, so we will still be another five degrees above normal like the past couple of days. The aquifer dropped down a half a foot. Should be getting a nice bump after uh, some of the rain tonight. Mountain Cedars moderate mold is on the low side. First things first, going to have to be on the lookout for a little bit of fog around the area. We're already down to just a quarter mile visibility over there around Gonzales. Uh, got some fog showing up around Bernie, Castroville as well. Hondo, Pleasanton. So it's still early as we approach sunrise. A lot of times these uh, numbers tend to drop down. So again, we'll be on the lookout for that around here this morning. And again, temperatures are extremely warm. Very very, very humid. Grab a light. If you're going to be gone all day long, take a light rain jacket with you because we will start to see a couple of showers later on this afternoon. We got some of that fog this morning and like I said, 70 with just one or two here or there. Not a big deal, but it's tonight. You really want to pay attention to what's going to be going on because we are going to see storms developing tonight after dinner time. Some of those are going to be on the potentially severe side and also some heavy rain around here tonight. And then we'll get a second wave in the overnight hours in the wee hours tomorrow morning. Now we're still looking at everything getting on out of here by roughly sunrise tomorrow morning. We're going to clear out. It's going to be very breezy then tomorrow and just downright windy on Sunday. So we'll have the severe threat tonight and potentially, like I said, some heavy rains. And then we're going to have a high fire danger coming in here on Sunday. We'll get everything all sorted out. All the numbers coming up in just a couple of minutes. But first of all, you may have uh, seen yesterday where the severe threat was actually bumped up. We had the the one on a scale of one to five that was covering all of the area and that was bumped up to a two on a scale of one to five. So some of those scattered storms. So yeah, the threat has increased somewhat for some of those severe storms around here tonight. Going to take a look, like I said, at all the numbers coming up in uh, just a couple of minutes and what specifically to expect. Traffic Authority, RJ, what's going on this morning? All right, Mike, yeah, things looking good right now. If you are headed out during our 5 o'clock hour here, taking a look at Trans Guide, things, again, smooth sailing across the city of San Antonio here. 37 Salado Creek, 281 at the quarry. Not too many people on the roads right now, so you need to head out. That might be a good time to do that. We do have some overnight construction. Let you know about uh, this has been construction that we do see on a regular basis now. Two main lanes are still closed out here. I-35 southbound at Loop 1604 on the northeast side, so it's backing up traffic a little bit up to the Live Oak and the Forum area, but uh, they've usually cleared out this traffic between 5 and 530 or that, excuse me, that construction out there. Okay, so the biggest thing we're going to be following throughout the day, we have another round of closures on the far northwest side. I-10 from UTSA Park, from UTSA Boulevard to La Gantera Parkway, that's going to be shut down this weekend, and on 1604, we're also going to have uh, Vance Jackson Road to La Gantera Parkway on 1604. That's going to be closed this weekend as well. So we're going to be talking about this throughout our entire hour here. We're also going to hear from TxDOT officials exactly what they are doing here and why there is some good news on the horizon for our drivers. But again, this closure in place tonight starting at 9 o'clock and going through Monday 5 a.m. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. A military veteran accused of murder is now a free man clear of all charges. A Bear County jury found Roger McCracken not guilty in the murder of Ronnie Riddle. Our Sarah Costa is here to break down why the jury decided what it did. Good morning, guys. That verdict coming in late last night. This all started when an argument between the neighbors turned into a shooting back in 2021 happening at an apartment complex on the city's south side. And it with Riddle dead and McCracken facing murder charges with the possible sentence of five to 99 years or life in prison. Prosecutors say McCracken had no right to take a life, but his defense attorney, Joseph Holscher, argued it was an act of self-defense, arguing his client made a split-second decision to protect his family, fearing they might be murdered. 
Today we've got our not guilty. Roger McCracken is acquitted because he did the right thing in protecting his family. Now, Riddle's wife spoke to KSAT by phone last night and says her family is heartbroken and devastated. She says hearing this verdict was like having Riddle killed all over again. As for what's next, she says all they can do is try and move forward again. Had McCracken been found guilty, he would have faced five to 99 years or life in prison. Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Staffing and funding issues are what caused a 10-year-old coding boot camp to close its doors abruptly after Christmas. A statement posted on CodeUp's website cites hiring freezes, funding changes, and a, quote, inability to retain essential teaching resources. Now, it goes on to say, quote, rather than continuing in a way that would not deliver results, the best choice was to find our remaining students' places in other programs. CodeUp also says its team is still working to assist students, alumni, and teammates. Those still looking for help with new programs or employment can contact CodeUp at the email on your screen right now. Next steps at codeup.edu. In your morning headlines, several people have died after a small plane crashed into a mobile home park in Clearwater, Florida last night. According to the FAA, that's after the pilot reported engine failure. At a press briefing, Clearwater's fire chief confirmed the fatalities for those from the plane and also a home that the plane hit. Officials also say the pilot declared May Day to controllers just before the plane lost contact with the tower. The cause of the crash is still unknown. The FAA and National Transportation Safety Board will investigate. Later today, President Joe Biden will join the families of the three fallen soldiers who were killed in a recent drone attack in Jordan. The bodies of their loved ones will arrive at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. And as ABC's N1 reports, the White House has vowed to retaliate against the Iran-backed militants blamed for that attack. Final preparations are underway for the U.S. to strike back against the Iranian-backed group blamed for the drone attack in Jordan that killed three American soldiers and wounded 47 others. The White House warning this will be a multi-tiered attack over a period of time. We will have to do, we will do what we need to do to make sure that, um, that uh, those responsible are held properly accountable. Officials signaled it's unlikely for strikes to happen inside Iran, despite forensics determining it was an Iranian-made drone fired by an Islamic militia group that hit that base. This as Houthi rebels backed by Iran brazenly launched a new wave of missiles against ships in the Red Sea in response to the U.S. destroying 10 of their attack drones and a ground control station in Yemen. Later this morning, President Biden will take part in the dignified transfer of the three fallen soldiers during a ceremony at Dover Air Force Base. They've raised their lives in harm's way. They risked it all and will never forget the sacrifices and service to our country at the dozens of service members who were wounded and are recovering now. The president this week calling the families of Sergeants William Rivers, Brianna Moffitt and Kennedy Sanders. Video from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution showing the moment the Sanders family received that call. I got one of those phone calls out of the blue and tell me my wife and daughter were dead. The president comforting them, reflecting on his own experience of grief when he lost his wife and daughter in a car accident and his son Bo to brain cancer. If you've made it through, I know that, you know, we can make it through as well. The president, first lady, defense secretary and joint chiefs of staff will all meet with the families of the fallen service members today before the dignified transfer. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. After winning two straight on a back-to-back, -back, the Spurs have dropped their last two games at home, including the latest setback at Orlando the other night uh, versus Orlando. Spurs clawed their way back into the game from 25 down, but couldn't maintain the same energy throughout the course of the game. Devin Vassell dropped a game-high 26 in the loss, while Wemby added 21, and Jeremy Sohan uh, notched a double-double. But until the Spurs take better care of the ball, it's going to be hard to stay in the win column. Big shout out to Blake Wesley for bringing that energy, getting back to back steals. Um, you know, just kind of bringing that energy for us to kind of get back into that fourth quarter. We got to play better in that third quarter. Too many turnovers, um, dry possessions, and just had them basically doing layup lines. And um, it's tough to come back in the fourth quarter down 20. You know, we did a great job, obviously, you know, cutting that lead back down and, you know, making it a game. But, you know, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot with that one. 
All right, Spurs had the night off last night. They're back on the court tonight against New Orleans. Tip off against the Pelicans, 7 o'clock over at Frost Bank Center. And as always, no matter what, That's right. go Spurs go. <laughs> go Spurs go. Time now, 510 and 62 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, Amazon launches Rufus, an AI-powered shopping assistant. We'll show you how it can give you more information about Amazon's products. Up next, how a group of teachers managed to win a Powerball jackpot. And what's next for this millionaire crew of educators. Good for them. Love that. Outside with live cam. Things are calm now. Very warm out there, uh, considering what the weather we've had in the mornings now for weeks. But we are on alert for some rough weather in the overnight hours. Mike will explain more coming up. And as we go to break, another live look at Gobbler's Knob in Puxatawney, <laughs> Pennsylvania, uh, where Puxatawney Phil is getting ready to tell us his prediction. And people are very excited out there. You can see them bright, well, not bright and early, dark and early this morning on and this Groundhog Day. Barbie-inspired sweatshirts, oh, I think, right? Oh, I didn't get to read it. Oh. It's, I think it says, it, it's, is I'm it Knuff. Knuff? Yeah. I'm Knuff. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 514. A group of 30 current and former employees of a Kentucky middle school recently won a $1 million Powerball jackpot. ABC's DeMarco Morgan has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, meet the luckiest teachers in America. I won! <laughs> 30 current and former educators and staff from R.A. Jones Middle School pooling their money together, playing the same set of Powerball numbers for about four years. Being a math teacher, I wanted a nice number, so maybe it was 27 and I recruited three more. And then the moment none of them ever expected. And I called um, one of the people in the group and I said, check this for me, check this for me. You, know, <laughs> you just can't believe it. That's right. They suddenly had a winning ticket for $1 million. We're all educators, so none of, <laughs> none of us took the next day off. So where did they hide the ticket? And what's next for the new millionaire crew? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm DeMarco Morgan, ABC News, New York. Congratulations. 515, 62 degrees. Let's look out there with Transguy this morning. Looking over at Highway 151. Things moving there. Also very quiet there at I-37. We're going to get a check in with RJ Markets to see how our roadways are looking this morning. A little bit. There's a light that always shines on me. If you're 55 and up, T-Mobile has plans built just for you. Like two lines of unlimited for just $27.50 a line. That's half the price of Verizon or AT&T. So switch to T-Mobile and save. Jordan's sore nose let out a fiery sneeze, so Dad grabbed Puffs Plus Lotion to soothe her with ease. Puffs Plus Lotion is gentle on sensitive skin and locks in moisture to provide soothing relief. A nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. America's number one lotion tissue. Welcome back. Exactly 519. Let's see what's up with our RJ Marquez. Yeah, guys, it would be a good time to hit the roads right now if that's what you have to do because we are not seeing much traffic, no, but any major delays or incidents right now. Let's take a quick look at Transguide here and looking at 37 there, 281 at the quarry. You saw that a little while ago. Let's see if we get one more in there, uh, 90 at Nogalitos. Yeah, traffic moving pretty good there on the north, uh, excuse me, on the west side. Okay, so we've been talking a lot about this closure here at 1604 and I-10, so we're gonna get another round of that closure taking place uh, starting tonight at nine o'clock and running through Monday at 5 a.m. So again, again, La Cantera Parkway to UTSA Boulevards, that's gonna be closed on I-10, and then Vance Jackson to La Cantera Parkway is gonna be closed on 1604. So we have some video to show you here exactly what is going on and kind of give you a little bit of update on, on the progress out there. So basically they're installing these beams so the contractor over the past three weekends has set 27 of 30 steel beams needed to support that traffic there in that flyover ramp 
that's going to connect that's going to connect excuse me loop 1604 east to i-10 west so the contractor expects to set these remaining three steel beams during the closures this weekend now despite some travel delays and alternate routes there is some good news for drivers on the horizon TxDOT spokesperson jennifer serald said that this will be the final weekend to set the last beams on that particular ramp let's go ahead and hear from her that this is the first of four flyover ramps and right now the contractor expects to start um, work on the next the second flyover ramp sometime in the spring so while there will be closures um, in the meantime we will continue to see closures the next time we will see a major closure like the ones we had in january where it's major full closures on consecutive weekends will be in the springtime all right, so you just heard right there from Jennifer Serrell. This is a time lapse that they gave us of some ground video of them installing one of those beams. And again, 30 beams have been installed over the month of January, or will be installed over the month of January as they continue on this uh, immense flyover ramp there on the northwest side. So again, last weekend here, if you guys come back out to me real quick, uh, last weekend that we're going to see the closures out there up until maybe the spring. So we're going to get a little bit of break for our drivers on the northwest side. And again, TxDOT uh, told me yesterday that they appreciate everyone's patience as they go ahead and move on with this project out there. All right, Mike, have you been able to drive out there? I haven't in, in a few weeks. And, and it's funny, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, obviously you see the progress, but then when it's been a couple of weeks, wow. Yeah. You know, and, and, yeah. I drove up there on Wednesday and that flyover is already like over the highway and you're just like, whoa. I love that, that time-lapse video. That's <laughs> yeah, just pretty amazing cool how they do that. Thank you very much, RJ. All right. Uh, you can see those low clouds out there at the airport. Visibility is still okay, but obviously we're going to have to monitor the the fog situation over the course of the morning. Temperatures aren't going to be going anywhere. We're right in the low 60s around much of the area, upper 50s. 20 degrees warmer than what it was just a couple of days ago, and we are closer to the normal high temperature. We're not going to move all that much because plenty of clouds around here. We will make it up to uh, 60, at, excuse me, 66 at noon, and then top off at 70. A little bit of a chance for a couple of showers popping up later on this afternoon. So here's what computer models are indicating. Again, one or two of those showers, uh, maybe a thunderstorm way out there in western portions of the hill country. And this is going to be late this afternoon in and around dinner time. Then as the evening rolls on, we're going to see more of these thunderstorms developing around here. And that's going to be the case through tonight, up through about news time tonight. And some of those may be on the strong to potentially severe side. Notice how we've got one band here here and then the next sort of wave that's going to be coming through in the overnight hours early tomorrow morning and then those will continue to clear on out and by the time you wake up tomorrow in, unless the, uh, the the thunder wakes you up in the overnight hours and the heavy rain that's all going to be out of here and we've got a beautiful day in store so as i mentioned off the top of the show yesterday storm prediction center upped the the threat for severe weather around here to a two on scale of one to five. It had just been everybody had the the chance for an isolated. Now there's going to be a couple of more potentially uh, severe storms around the area and the threats that we are looking at. Hail is going to be the biggest threat around here. Also high winds tonight. We're going to have some heavy downpours as well and you know you might see inch inch and a half of rain very very quickly. Remember a couple of a uh, couple of weeks ago when we had that very heavy rain got to like an inch within less than an hour out there causing some flooding. Also, you can't rule out an isolated tornado. Not very likely at all, but the atmosphere is kind of set up that that is a possibility. So again, the best advice is keep your weather app handy and make sure you stay tuned in because we're going to be updating things obviously all night long and into the early morning hours. Very quick check on rainfall potential and this is it says next three days, but it's basically just overnight tonight. And we're looking at again, an inch of rain is a possibility around here. A little bit less. We'll have those pockets around there in the hill country. The majority of it's going to be further off to the east, but going to have those hefty downpours. And they'll be, you know, even with some of those storms, the localized heavy downpours. So that's going to be tonight in the overnight hours. We'll see those few showers developing. Tomorrow we clear out nicely. It's going to be windy tomorrow. Very, very windy on Sunday. High fire danger. More than likely, we're going to be seeing some red flag warnings issued on Sunday around here. Other than that, Gordon. Gorgeous weather all the way through the first half of next week. Rodeo starts Thursday. Going to have some clouds around next Thursday. More after this. Just about 528 Apple's $3,500 Vision Pro headset goes on sale in stores today. ABC's Allison Kosick has the details in today's Tech Bites. 
In today's Tech Bytes, Apple's much-anticipated Vision Pro headset goes on sale today. Apple says more than 600 spatial apps have been built specifically for the $3,500 device. The Vision Pro is also compatible with more than a million other apps. New York's Apple Store added a special neon display for today's launch. Meta's Vision Quest headsets now have spatial video playback. The content can be uploaded directly from an iPhone, but users will need Series 15 phone to make videos. Meta says content will be stored on the cloud instead of the headset to save hard drive space. Amazon has launched a new shopping feature, an AI assistant dubbed Rufus. The chatbot can answer virtually any questions about available products. Rufus can also make recommendations about products and even give great gift giving advice. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Allison Kosick. Have a great day. 528, 62 degrees. Well, ahead on GMSA at 6, we are getting you ready for the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, what you can expect downtown tomorrow morning. And good morning to you. We made it to Friday, February 2nd. It's Groundhog Day. Yeah, this is a time of year. Well, I, I mean, you, you seem okay with it. Justin, not a fan. Not a fan. Uh, <laughs> we'll explain why we'll explain. in a moment. Let's take a live yeah. look at Pennsylvania right now where the festivities are underway. And it may be 631 in the morning on the East Coast, but they don't care. Fireworks are going <laughs> right now. And in just a little while, uh, in about an hour or so, we should find out whether... Uh, that prognosticator of prognosticators predicts a, an extended winter or early spring. Yeah, they have a big crowd there already, and it's a lot colder over there than it is here. Mike. So, yeah. so real quick, back to Justin, Mike. Yes. Mm -hmm. The he, he, uh, uh, Justin Horn hates uh, the groundhog because he feels like he's a very sloppy meteorologist. <laughs> he doesn't okay, give a lot of credit to the folks with Yeah. It's he's a cute little critter. Isn't he? Yeah, so's the, so's Justin the, or so's Phil? The, so's, the, so's the groundhog. You stole my line, so. And it's all in fun. All right. Uh, on the on the serious side around here this morning, there's a lot that's going to be going on tonight. So uh, just be, get ready for this. First of all, this morning, you can see some of those low clouds out there by the airport. It is very, very warm. 62 degrees right now. Normal high temperature is 65. We're 20 above where we were just a, a couple of days ago. And the humidity has definitely come back into the picture. And with that humidity hanging around here and actually going to be going up a little bit as we go into the afternoon, that's going to help the feed some showers and some potentially strong to severe storms later on tonight. More on that in a second. All right, visibility half mile Gonzales. That's the, the thickest fog right now. Got some going up by 10 in toward Bernie and heading out 90 toward Castroville, but a lot you know, is going to go back and forth. We can always see these visibilities drop down as we especially approach sunrise. And just after that, don't have any advisories posted. Uh, temperatures, everybody's in the upper 50s, low 60s as of right now, way above normal. Mountain cedars, moderate. Mold is low. Of course, the updated count is going to come out later on this morning. So 66 at noon. We'll still keep a couple of patches of fog around here. A little bit of sunshine, very, very limited at best. A couple of showers going to start to develop late this afternoon. Then we're going to start to see some storms around here tonight, and some of those storms are going to be on the severe side. Yesterday, Storm, Predi Storm Prediction Center, it was right around noon, bumped up the odds of seeing severe storms. So now we're on a scale of two out of five, and that's for obviously the metropolitan area, basically the western about three-fourths of our viewing area, just with the exception of the uh, eastern counties out there. So high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats. An isolated tornado can't be ruled out, not very likely at all. And then on top of that, we can also see some very heavy downpours around here. So we'll tell you when the timing is exactly for some of these storms and then the rest of the weekend, which looks great, but a very high fire danger because of the very, very windy conditions. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, what's going on? All right, Mike, yeah, things looking pretty good. If you are about to head out onto the roads right now, take a look at here at TransGuide traffic cameras. I at Frio. Traffic moving pretty smooth in both directions there. See if we get a couple more here. 151 Loop 410 West. Traffic you can see. Not too many people on the roads right now. We do expect that to change as we get closer to our 6 o'clock hour. Take a look at our maps. We've cleared out the construction there in the Live Oak area, so we're good to go there. We had some construction earlier up in uh, Walnut Avenue headed up to New Braunfels, but that has cleared as well. So again, no major delays, no major accidents or incidents to let you know about at the moment. But that will not be the case for drivers on the far northwest side.
side, we are getting another round of closures there at the Loop 1604 and I-10 interchange, and that's where we find our Katrina Weber, who's going to give us more details on this latest closure. Katrina. Well, good morning. It is major work that's being done here has led to some major headaches for drivers in this area that uh, over the course of this month on weekends, as you probably know, if you've been out here, uh, quite a headache as they have closed this entire interchange. Loop 1604 and I-10 here on the northwest side shut down for the entire weekend, and that will be the case again this weekend. Now, let me give you a look at some videos so you can see uh, the work in progress as it's been done. And of course, I mentioned all weekend. So that starts at 9 o'clock tonight, goes until 5 a.m. Monday. This entire exchange will be shut down. Now, this is TxDOT work, and the idea is to install some beams for ramps in the area. Uh, this They have already installed 27 of the 30 ramps, and fingers crossed this will be the end of it this weekend. This weekend will be our final weekend, weather permitting. Um, to, to place those last three beams and uh, finalize that first flyover ramp. We expect right now that first ramp to open later this year, maybe late summer in the fall time. Yeah, I mentioned uh, the end of it. Well, let me say the end of this phase of the work. Now, there is obviously a lot more work here to be done. So stay tuned for what is to come in the future. But for now, again, this weekend, the last time they're going to close the exchange uh, here at Loop 1604 and I-10 uh, for now. But more work to come in the future. Stay tuned. And maybe for this weekend, you might want to stay away. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Here we go again. All right. Thank you very much, Katrina. In your other morning headlines, President Biden campaign in Michigan yesterday, meeting with United Auto Workers and touting his record on the economy. But the president was also met by pro-Palestinian protesters in Michigan, a key battleground state and home to the largest Arab American community in the U.S. It comes amid a new national poll showing Biden losing to former President Trump 49 to 45 percent. It also comes as he faces more challenges on Capitol Hill with two pieces of legislation, border security and a tax cut bill. The U.S. State Department has approved a proposed sale of military equipment to India worth nearly $4 billion. According to the agency, the Indian government requested to purchase drones, missiles, bombs, test vehicles, navigational systems, and other support equipment. The proposed sale comes as the U.S. tries to strengthen its Indo-Pacific strategy and counter China's influence in the region. The Defense Security Cooperation Agency has notified Congress of the possible sale. That notification will give Congress a review period to evaluate and raise concerns before that sale can be finalized. Back here at home, the green bins that the city of San Antonio provides aren't just for yard clippings, but more importantly, for food waste. In this segment of Gardening with KSET, our Sarah Costa explains the importance of using those green bins and how you can even get a free kitchen countertop compost bin from the city. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Okay, hear me out. I know people are like, what? And one more thing we have to do. But you know in your house, like I have a trash bin. You know, I have something for my trash, then I have a little container for my recycling, and now I have this little countertop kitchen compost bin. Because if you're a homeowner in the city of San Antonio, you get three disposal bins for your, you know, outside. We get a black bin for trash, a blue bin for recycling, and a green bin for organics, which means a lot more can go inside that bin outside of leaves, yard clippings, and branches like food waste. Take a look. Why is it so crucial to not toss food and paper waste into the trash? According to the EPA in 2017, 75% of food waste generated in the U.S. was landfilled. <gasps> Only 6% was composted. Food waste can't naturally break down when it's mixed in with plastics and other waste at the landfill. Instead, ends up releasing a lot of greenhouse gases, which is a huge contributor to global warming. So how can we fix this? Toss your coffee grinds, old food waste, and dirty paper products into your green bins, not into your trash bins. San Antonio is one of the few cities in the country to have a green bin organics program. That waste doesn't go to the landfill, but to a separate location where 50 to 60 tons a day are taken to be broken down naturally by microorganisms. To encourage this, get a kitchen top compost bin. By Googling, you can find several online, or you can get a free one from the city by visiting your city council district office. 
And no, it won't stink up your kitchen. They are designed to keep the smell of rotting food inside the box. I line mine with a paper bag and then dump it into my green bin twice a week. Happy gardening. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. I literally on cue, Mark was like, right. No, it doesn't smell. My husband said the same thing. He's like, that thing better not smell up our kitchen. It doesn't smell up the kitchen, I promise, because they have like these um, holes at the top. So I don't know. I don't know how to keep the smell in. Okay? But that's neat. Yeah. It works. And I got mine by calling the city council district office, which I recommend you do before you go, because I know they were distributed to all the offices, but some offices haven't gotten them yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, beforehand, I wasn't as disciplined as taking my food scraps to the green bin outside. But now that I have my household trash um, has gone down from three to four bags a week to about one and a half. So big difference. I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm doing my part. You're Martin. doing your yeah. part. <laughs> so you had to do, do a little bit more legwork to get the thing. Yes. But you right. feel like you're making a difference. Absolutely. And that's what matters. Yeah. All it's right. probably so easier for, it to, for you to take that out. Yeah, just than, take my know. little bin when I take my recycle and my trash. It's just one more little thing I carry. They're tiny, you know. And she does it just like that. Sarah, thank you. <laughs> 541, 62 degrees. A woman who once was in critical condition is now meeting her blood donor and the first responders who helped her. Coming up tonight on the Night Beat, we're showing you inside the Heroes in Arm program through the blood bank and how they're pushing for more whole blood donors in 2024. Let's look out there with live cam. It's a calm morning and 62 degrees. Wow, really not cold at all. Uh, but we are uh, looking forward to some changes overnight. We're going to check in with Mike for all of those changes coming up. Welcome back. 544 now to a heartfelt moment for a San Antonio mother who finally met the blood donor and first responders who saved her life. As our Avery Everett explains, she received the life-saving blood transfusion after suffering a medical emergency. You're saving people's families, you're saving people's lives, and they really matter. For a mother of four, every moment counts. It's a gift. And Jennifer Brudnicki says she wouldn't be here without the help of whole blood. And I started hemorrhaging immediately and I did not stop until I went to the hospital. After suffering a miscarriage in 2022, Brudnicki had to call 911. She was met by these two San Antonio Fire Department first responders and they gave her an immediate transfusion of whole blood. As soon as it came, I remember everything becoming a lot clearer. Whole blood helps to treat severe blood loss before a patient arrives to the hospital. It's stocked on San Antonio EMS units like this one, but it comes from people like George King. He donated the blood that saved Brudnicki, meeting for the first time Thursday. This is a heartfelt hug after what could have been a heartbreaking story. 87 years and I have never felt like this ever. Brudnicki is among thousands of whole blood recipients in South Central Texas and among thousands who have survived because of it. Now she's hoping her story will help shed awareness on the importance of donating. It's not just something that gets put back in a fridge forever and gets forgotten about. This is a need that just keeps giving. This comes at a time where blood donations are already critically low. On the anniversary of its Heroes in Arms Whole Blood program, South Texas Blood and Tissue is warding of the dire need for blood donors to help stock ambulances for emergencies. It's a race against the clock. When someone's bleeding to death, whatever origin, medical or trauma, there's only so much time. It worked and it made me healthy again. A haunting memory changed by an act of heroism, leaving this family of six with more than just hope, but their mom too. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Great story. 546 on your Friday morning. Look out there with Trans Guide. Looking over at I-10 at Woodlawn. Things are moving there. Uh, we're going to check in with RJ about the roadways, but also about the big closure happening this weekend again. Welcome back to GMSA. If you are a morning person, you got to admire the tenacity of these folks. They take it to a whole different level. It is Groundhog Day. You're looking live at Gobbler's Knob in Pennsylvania, where Punxsutawney Phil is getting ready to tell us whether we will have six more weeks of winter or if spring will come early this year and the, uh, the sport coat is optional. Now, we are to What's he saying? They got the hats on, everybody. That's pretty cool. The Weather Channel. Oh, so it's basically a pep rally still. <laughs> That's right. awesome. Here's a fun fact from our producer, Phil the Groundhog, has been correct uh, about his weather predictions only about 39% of the time. So would you hire him or would you fire him, Mike? 
I'd probably not hire him. But <laughs> well, has Bill Murray ever been there for the actual? Oh yeah, well the movie. I mean, I it, love that movie. Yeah. That was a so, Bill Murray shirt, right? Yeah, the, so, so, so the guy okay, with the fancy right. jacket yeah. had a Bill yeah. Murray shirt. That's from the 1993 film of mm -hmm. Groundhog Day. Has it been that long? Too? Yes, wow. it has. Thirty year anniversary. Then. Well, fun? no, what? Thirty one actually. That is, that, is a, that is a fun film. Yeah, I love that. Huh. Yeah, me too. All right. Yeah, guys, roads. <laughs> By the way, it looks like they're having a good time out there. That's a lot of fun. Plus, I like how they're, you know, you got to use the analytics nowadays in everything, in sports, even Punxsutawney Phil, his predictions. Uh, let's take a quick look here at Trans Guy Traffic Cameras. Loop 410 at Blanco Road. Traffic moving pretty good there. 151 West Military Drive. Same situation there as well. Just one sort of thing that, that we're keeping an eye on right now. We have some ongoing construction taking place here on the uh, north side. This is going to be on 281. This is the entrance ramp there for the northbound lanes of 281 at Thousand Oaks. It was causing just a little bit of a delay, but uh, again, something for our drivers to just kind of keep in mind that area. But again, everything else is looking pretty good across the city. As Stephanie mentioned before, um, before we went to break, we do have this uh, I-10 1604 closure that's going to be in place throughout the weekend. So if you are traveling on I-10, keep in mind that UTSA Boulevard to La Cantera Parkway, that's going to be closed on that end. And if you're going to be heading on 1604 uh, east and westbound traffic here, that's going to be closed from Vance Jackson all the way to La Cantera Parkway. So you're going to have to detour all the way up to the rim, come back all the way around on the access road, and then you're going to be able to get back onto La Cantera Parkway. So again, that closure taking place tonight nine o'clock weather permitting of course and that's going to run through 5 a.m on monday and speaking of the weather mike how are things looking right now well they're not going to really be able to do too much out there i wouldn't imagine given the the forecast tonight they didn't have to you know pick things back up so hopefully they can get done by five o'clock uh, monday morning all right here's a look from our uh, camera down there at brook city base boy the dome is definitely lit up but you can see those low clouds hanging over the skyline right now Humidity, you're going to notice it when you step outside. Dew points, sort of the, the measure moisture in the atmosphere, if you will, have gone up 10, 15, 20 degrees uh, on average around the area since this time yesterday. And the humidity is going to continue to kind of get pumped on in here. And that's going to help to feed some of those showers and thunderstorms around here and help to make the atmosphere that much more unstable, which is why we're going to be seeing potentially severe storms. Now, as everything moves on through here, we are going to get drier air coming on in and get progressively drier going into Sunday, especially tomorrow afternoon as well as Sunday. And with that dry air in place and the very windy conditions, that's what is then going to enhance the fire danger around here on Sunday, especially because we're going to be looking at uh, wind gusts 40, 45 miles per hour and even stronger than that, especially in the hill country. Back to this morning, some fog. We're going to have to be on the lookout for that because of all that extra humidity around here. I haven't seen any real, real uh, reduced visibilities as of yet. And then up to 66 at noon. Temperatures really, you know, 10 degrees maybe between the low and the high today. And a couple of showers are going to be developing later on this afternoon. Just a few of them, even a couple of thunderstorms out there in parts of the hill country. So by late this afternoon and right around dinner time, right around news time at 5 o'clock, you're going to definitely want to tune in. Keep your weather app handy and keep checking out the radar for any uh, warnings around here. And they're probably going to be issued. And this is going to be in through this evening. Then another wave of potentially severe storms is going to be moving through in the wee hours tomorrow morning. But getting on out of here looks like right around or just before even sunrise tomorrow. So we've got this what's called a negative tilt in the atmosphere, and these are what usually are associated with severe storms, but that low is going to move in here close enough to, like I said, push everything on out of here fairly quickly, but it's going to hit pretty hard. On top of that, we are going to be seeing some pretty heavy downpours associated with some of those storms. So we've got the rain tonight, windy tomorrow, very windy with dry air on Sunday. Red flag warnings are a definite possibility to be issued on Sunday and beautiful weather through the first half of next week. More after this. Stick around. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, Sarah Costa joins us for Guarding with KSAT, why she says you should hold on to some of your leftovers. And Trans Guy looking good right now. A whole different story perhaps by tonight with some potentially rough weather in the area.